Hey, what's going on everybody? Robert Marzullo here with Ram Studio Comics bringing you another video. Uh, today's video is going to be breaking down the human form with certain shapes and finding those shapes. Uh, I had a request from uh, somebody in the comments section to kind of uh, go through figure drawing and the idea of the, the various shapes. So what I'll do is I'll draw a couple of the shapes, uh, you know, standard pose and I'll explain some of the shapes that I see and then you kind of pick apart which ones uh, you know kind of resonate with you and you think would uh, uh, work out well in your drawing. Um, first off with the upper uh, torso I always do kind of a, a wedge shape like this and what that does is by being it down like this it helps me to remember to make the abdominal or the waist area nice and thin for the superhero figures. I had kind of a cylinder shape at the bottom of it with an opening like that. I recreate the same wedge shape or pretty darn similar uh, for the pelvic area, the openings for the legs like that. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw a little bit of this and then I'm going to draw some of these shapes off the side. Uh, like for instance the shoulder there which I've explained in some other videos I kinda use a shape like this there's a shoulder you know, this is just the base shapes that I would use to uh, build the character uh, now another good uh, thing to remember for chest is kind of a stretched out W you see that Actually, what I'll do to pinpoint that a little bit more is I'll grab another color on another layer and show you some of these shapes. So the stretched out W, like that. And then for the abdominal or the torso, uh, a stretched out opposite uh, V or, you know, an upside down V like that. Um, and, you know, the shoulder, you can see how got kind of a I don't know what you call that, kind of a, a C, or stretched out C. But I'll draw them off to the side. It's mainly focusing on learning the shapes uh, and then putting them together. There's a cut, you know, there's different ways to draw the, uh, the, the form to do this. And I'm pretty sure this shape right here will look real re recognizable to you. But that's a good shape right there for a chest, uh, for the upper uh, upper part of the body right there. And then you can build over that with the other shapes. So you got a shoulder here, you got a, I don't know what you call it, upper chest area, upper abdominal, upper upper body I guess. But you're going to overlay more shapes on top of that. <clears throat> and then you basically take this to connect down to the, the pelvic. would be kind of this smooth line bend uh, cylinder. And I'll just draw through that a little bit. And then you keep adding on to that. So you'd add these shoulders over to here. And you got to remember the shoulders pivot and also connect to the chest. There's a relationship from the shoulders to the chest like this. They're pretty much, um, they're not the same muscle group, but they're very interconnected. And, the, you know, if the shoulder moves, the chest is going to change shape. You want to remember that. And then the lats become very easy. You can just do this little half moon shape and throw in your lats. And, you know, you start getting the upper torso form, you know, some good shapes in there. Um, connect it to the, the pelvic. Now, as far as legs, legs can start off really basic. Uh, again, you know, you can always draw in your, your kind of mannequin shapes for your positioning. So like this. So something like that. And legs start off very basic. Thicker at the top, thinner to the base of the knee. Uh, thicker if it's male versus female. Um, little circle for the kneecap. I generally do that. And then there's usually the connective part of the knee that 
kind of uh, goes to the side of that and then again thicker and then down to thinner for the uh, calf not too thin if it's uh, again a male character you want to keep the uh, base of the calf thicker where the ankle meets like that <clears throat> and then from there it's going to be th the musculature but what I'll do again is point out the shape so a very basic shape and you can even go extremely basic like this and just get your your proportions and your positioning right before you start you know building on to it with other shapes um, it's good to be able to recognize any of those flaws early on in the design process of your character <coughs> excuse me and then uh, by the time you invest the the additional time to put the uh, muscles over top uh, you you know you don't end up uh, pitching a drawing that you spend all that time on you, you waste all that time or uh, change your your, uh, uh, your mistakes or whatever in the beginning design process of it all right and then for feet and again starting real basic just a quick little wedge shape like that uh, you know getting the proportion and the angle of the foot right before you go through and draw the rest over it um, so from the side is as far as building the shape I would recommend that the leg looks kinda like this and um, another thing to remember with the leg is that it actually works better to draw it relatively straight on the inside but with a nice arc on the outside like this and then the knee can be pretty basic kind of like this just wedge shape again like that <clears throat> I'll bring this up <coughs> whoa excuse me I'm sorry I like I'm coming down with a bit of a cold that'd be great okay so the lower part of the leg again keeping the inside a little bit more straight and flat like this kind of has this bend here and then the <clears throat> outer bend or curve like that so as basic as this is that's that's pretty much a good straight on shot of a leg and then from there uh, go back to adding another layer and I'll show you what shapes to look for as far as adding the muscle uh, whoop. grab the red there okay so this muscle kind of does this little deal where it connects to the knee, flows up and under uh, this larger muscle that's at the front of the leg. Kind of does like that. And this one kind of starts thin, gets larger up to the side of the leg, and then blends back in. And obviously it's good to uh, have some muscle magazines or anatomy books in front of you while you work on this so that you can find the uh, the type of anatomy that you really want to focus on uh, you know what portions of it uh, you'd like to uh, draw in your artwork especially if you're doing uh, comic illustration where it's not correct anatomy it's just basis off correct it's based off correct anatomy um, you know if you really start to study uh, anatomy in depth and you look at other artists uh, you'll realize that there's very few that do correct anatomy it's it's very stylized and disproportionate and stuff like that so you have to kind of figure out where you want your style to be uh, you know what what parts of it are entirely correct with your drawing and what parts are just overly stylized <clears throat> and I'll tell you right now the artists that become the most famous in my judgment and my uh, study of that uh, particular industry are the over stylized artists so do not feel bad about um, you know not always being totally correct find your style uh, focus on that and believe me you'll be okay with that because uh, the ones that do better are the ones that are overly stylized they seem to draw more of a fan base and uh, impress more uh, more of a crowd so which I, I don't know to me makes sense people are going to comics for fantasy type work fantasy artwork fantasy characters you know if you're drawing uh, 
real life if you're drawing uh, um, stuff that you see every day proportionate to what you see every day and all that it's going to be less fantastical which wouldn't coincide with you know what the industry is about so just my opinion FYI <clears throat> so um, so you see there how I was able to uh, rope draw some of the anatomy into this shape and get a relatively um, decent looking leg and then you know you go through and you add all your little line work and shading and you know bring it out and add your your darker shadows and stuff like that so and again that's all just based on style and you know um, perception and how you how you see it so like that just kind of keep thinking with it but <clears throat> okay so what else so I just want to make sure I give you the basic shapes because that seemed like what the the uh, person commenting wanted and I and I kind of I kind of see that sometimes I'll draw through this stuff entirely too fast and I don't really explain what shapes I'm seeing probably because I've <clears throat> drawn it for so long that I, I just don't uh, think about it that way anymore um, I guess even with the face real quick let me try to do that <clears throat> excuse me goodness so I should have drank some water before I started this video sorry about that okay so the face shape you know there's our jaw line uh, one good thing to do when you're drawing faces seeing I kind of bypassed it right there so is draw a perfect circle like this or relatively perfect <clears throat> draw your wedge shape for the base of the chin that connects to it like this you know and, and there's your neckline something like that the ear can be a total circle with another circle beside it that gives you kind of your <clears throat> base ear shape and then what you do is just start halfway down the head rotate around it and give your eye position halfway down from there the nose position halfway down the, the mouth position and then the line uh, perfectly down the middle you know kind of uh, wedge shapes or I don't know a little stretched out V's again or maybe that could be an M across the brow for uh, you know the brow and for the eyes you just kind of throw in some little half moons connected something like that uh, a wedge for the nose or a pyramid or diamond shape for the nose and you could draw that out even further and then uh, lighten the lines by either erasing them if you're working on paper or if you're on layers like I am toning down the layer and drawing over top of it uh, the mouth is, is basically a stretched out M uh, the cheekbones can be wedge shapes at first the chin can be kind of a block shape at first you know just start connecting it all together and you know but be be wary of you know being too boxy like I am right here uh, the only bad thing to me is that if you do tend to get a little too boxy as I've done here uh, that can show through in your your final drawing now if you like a real boxy animated style then then by all means do it this way and you'll be fine but if you like a little bit more of a fleshy kind of uh, organic feel to your your drawings then you'll want to soften these lines up dramatically and to do that like for instance this brow cheek area I would probably just come down through here kinda of do this rope drawing I would make sure to round out some of the form take away some of the the angles and then also make sure to overlap the lines and come into the form so let me show you what I'm trying to explain there there's a chin a little little butt in the chin there and maybe even the brow let me see yeah like that so you see how like I'm trying to with line weight and with curvature of the lines I'm trying to soften this the same effect is there to there 
but I'm trying to make it look more soft and organic versus, you know, that, 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 you know, real boxy and shaped like that. So, um, de depending on the style you like, you know, there's different styles for every artist. So, um, all right, now as far as the arms, because it's the only thing I think I haven't covered in the, the form so far with this. The arms, I've explained a lot that I, I do this coil method for foreshortening. It helps me out. But this one, this video is more to explain the shapes. So in this perspective, you could get away with a cylinder shape and then another cylinder shape like that. And for good reference on that, I recommend... Uh, uh, how to draw the marble way for for this cone effect. Uh, it really shows you a lot and the artist in that video which I believe is John Bushima um, does a fantastic job of explaining that so check that out if you uh, if you want more in depth of the cone effect. Now what I wanted to show you is based on this being your preliminary layout of the the character, the shape, is to see the shapes within that. So you could do the cones initially. I'll do these real light. I always do a wedge shape for a hand. That's just what works for me. Um, so for the hand, I, I kind of do this number where I'll do it over here. I'll do, <clears throat> and I explain this in other videos too, but just a, that's a hand right there to me. And the reason being is it gives me the basic initial structure of the hand, the direction of the hand, which I feel is very important and then I can focus on what I can consider to be the hard part which is the fingers. There's a slight bend here and there's a separation <clears throat> of the fingers and from there it's kind of fingers are a three part one two three like that but they kind of have a relationship to one another that you have to see um, they always kind of hook around like a uh, like a claw but then also um, there's a, a interconnectivity to the middle finger and the um, uh, the the ring finger, like that. They kind of always kind of stick together more, and then the pinky kind of does its own thing a little bit. Kind of bends more away from the rest. Uh, it's kind of the rebel, and uh, the pointer finger starts the direction of of all of them. Generally, I mean, this isn't uh, <laughs> a rule of thumb, but it's uh, it, it can be. It can. It can generally work that way. So that's kind of how I work with hands uh, as far as drawing them. You know, mix and match uh, information you get from me and from other artists and things like that, and you'll you'll come up with what works best for you. But I really like the wedge effect because I can usually come up with a, a hand position pretty quick. And not saying they'll always be great. I, I often have to redraw hands, but it can generally give me uh, a starting point that's that's effective and quick to do and keep in mind a big factor in illustrating comic books is, is speed uh, if not the biggest factor um, you know there's a lot of guys that can draw really well that's you, you need to get that through your head when you're trying to become a comic book illustrator that it's not the fact that you're the best artist out there uh, there's a lot of guys, stiff competition, uh, guys that are willing to draw for free. It's just insane, you know. So there's a lot of good artists out there. What you have to be aware of is workarounds, speed to, to get through certain uh, predicaments in art uh, and illustrating. And, you know, come up with something that's, you know, awesome and fantastical, but you can churn it out. You can hit deadlines and then then you cut your uh, competition way down. So that's probably one of the biggest things to really soak up when you're studying for, for this type of work. Okay, so now the shapes, since I kind of got off track there once again. The um, the shapes here in the arm, uh, I always look at the, the bicep like this. If I was to draw the bicep by itself, you know, you got this line down the middle of it like that one, I uh, can't remember which one, I guess it doesn't matter since I'm drawing it by itself, but one of the sides of the bicep tend to be bulkier and shorter than the other, so it's not a perfect uh, uh, moon shape or um, football shape, yeah, I guess the football shape would be more accurate. So there's, uh, you know, kind of a football for the bicep, 
Now from this angle where I perceive that we're kind of looking down at it like this, I'll draw a little bit of shading to show the direction of the bicep a little more. Um, I would picture that the tricep from this side would just be this little wedge shape like this. Or maybe a little bit larger, but if it's flexed then it's going to peak up and, and kind of be more tensed up there. There's a little separation of the muscle and an, I don't know if that's the bone or another muscle. I think it's another muscle. I don't think you just see bone there. but um, And then you know from there you do your shoulders which I've explained shoulders uh, in another video as far as the way the muscles work. Actually they kind of turn like this a little bit. Um, you know you have a bigger one uh, to the chest and your side one they, and it comes down lower in between these muscles but I'm running out of digital paper there so I'll just show you the shape of the bicep can be defined as a moon shape like that and then a wedge shape for the tricep from this angle now if you're looking at the back of the arm sorry I'm bouncing around all over the place here if you're looking at the back of the arm the uh, tricep again it'll be lower on one side that's another thing to keep in mind no, none of the aspects of the body are extremely symmetrical almost never I mean even uh, when you're drawing like a supermodel um, and you get into drawing the details you'll see that one eye is different than the other and, and things like that so um, sometimes it adds to the beauty of them so uh, you just need to be aware that symmetry is is not really you know accurate in uh, life drawing so you don't have to worry too much about that you should show a little bit of you know difference from side to side so in this case the tricep and I don't even know if I got this right I think this actually comes out a little bit more straight and down and bends uh, unfortunately I'm not looking at anatomy at this point but the tricep has three separations henceforth the name tricep and then um, the back of the arm you know you got these other little portions of the back of the arm and you hit the elbow here I think this one spins around the elbow if I'm not mistaken something like that but again you can almost see a bit of a football shape a couple of them and then this little string uh, V up the back there um, so study that find your shapes in there for the tricep um, the bicep again a football shape from there and the shoulders I'm not going to get into the muscle definition because I'm trying to explain more of the shapes. The shoulder is this kind of section right there. Uh, and another thing that I'll explain real fast is the reason why I draw these little lines in like this. So if you see me do something like that and I put these little lines across, the reason I'm doing that is I'm trying to give myself a visual of uh, rounding out this form. It's almost like if I was to sit there and draw a 3D grid over the form, which I do sometimes if I'm really struggling with trying to round something out. You can do that in your basic uh, initial sketch and then draw over top. It just helps you round the form out in your, your uh, mind's eye for the next stage of the drawing. So a lot of times when I'm sketching, I will, you know, say I got a chest being drawn in here like this. I might come in real fast and do like a line like this. And what that line means to me is kind of some depth right here from the chest to the abdomen to make it protrude out more visually to me for the next stage of my drawing. So just keep in mind that each sketch is a segue into your next stage of your drawing. If you think like that, you should be able to flow through a little bit better and get what you're looking for in these drawings. So I'll go ahead and wrap it up there. If there's anything I didn't cover and there was something that you were looking for <clears throat> as I was doing this, um, just let me know. Put it in the comments section. I will be sure to respond. I do a video at least once a week, sometimes more. So check back often and be sure to subscribe. And please share the videos so that I can uh, you know, get the word out there for what I'm doing with the YouTube channel. And, uh, you know keep people coming back and progress with all this. So I thank you very much for watching and for participating. This is Robert Marzullo from Ram Studios signing out.